The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Let me tell you a bedtime story, a different kind of bedtime story. It begins, we think, almost 14 billion years ago with a very hot, dense beginning. And we call it the Big Bang. And it, it expanded, you know, many fold, all of a sudden, very fast. But then something happened. That rapid accelerating expansion stopped and it just started to coast. And so it continued to expand and expand and expand vastly, but slower and slower and slower for some seven billion years. And then things shifted again. And around seven billion years ago, we believe that something started to speed up the universe. And this is where we are right now, living in a universe that is accelerating, expanding faster and faster. Now, if you're one of those people who are just now discovering that the universe is expanding, let alone accelerating, don't feel bad. Even Einstein, in his theory of gravity, assumed that the universe was static. If somebody hadn't told you that the universe was expanding, it would just seem pretty unlikely, right? I mean, if you, know, if you just sort of sat and thought, what kind of universe could we live in? The first thing that would come to your mind would not be a universe that was actually getting bigger and bigger and, and all distances were increasing. Um, that, I think you're only driven to that when you actually see the data. Above the UC Berkeley campus at the Berkeley Lab, physicist Saul Perlmutter is one of the researchers who have actually seen that data. For more than a decade, he's helped reshape our understanding of the cosmos. Some forces we are familiar with. Wind makes the clouds drift along. The moon helps drive the ocean's tides. And something is causing the galaxies to rush away from each other. Researchers believe the something that is pushing the universe apart makes up 70% of the fabric of the universe. But they're literally in the dark about what this something is. And so they've taken to calling it dark energy. People are, are using the term uh, dark energy basically as a placeholder um, to describe any explanation for why it is that we seem to be seeing the universe's expansion getting faster and faster. It's very exotic, it's very strange, and the strangest part, right, is that it's 70% of reality. 70% of the stuff in the universe is this thing that we just do not understand at all. If you're starting to get a little uneasy about the fact that two-thirds of the universe is unknown, rest assured, scientists out there are looking for answers. I, mean, I think I was, I was just one of those kids who always uh, thought that we should know how the world works around us, that you know, here, we, here we live on this earth and, and we don't fall through the floor and somebody should have given us an owner's manual about how, how the whole thing fits together and how you use it. In 1998, Perlmutter was part of one of two teams that discovered the expansion of the universe had started to accelerate seven billion years ago. But what exactly does it mean? that it's accelerating. First, you have to understand the universe is infinite, not an easy concept to grasp. Look, you're not gonna be able to picture this very well, but just imagine that you are living here on a galaxy and there's galaxies forever going that way and there are galaxies forever going that way and there are galaxies forever going that way in all directions, nothing but galaxies, no end. You can go for as far as you want and you'll find more and more galaxies. And just imagine that there's sort of a typical distance between those galaxies. And the only thing I mean when I'm saying that the universe is expanding is that we're sort of pumping extra space between the galaxies. And when we say it's accelerating, we just mean that that extra pumping is happening faster and faster, and the, and the distances are growing bigger and bigger more and more quickly. So how did Perlmutter's team figure out the history of the universe? They did so by looking at the light from supernovae, stars that exploded billions of years ago. Hey. How's it looking? Uh, it's looking good. We've, um, uh, the weather's good, telescope has uh, been released, and we're Sitting actually, in a room uh, at the Berkeley Lab, Perlmutter and physics student Hannah Swift are connected to one of the world's largest telescopes, the Keck 2 in Hawaii. The other half of their team is actually in Hawaii. What? <laughs> I said we're curious as to what's for dinner. You know that Chinese place? <laughs> just 
How's the uh, what, what the odds look like for tonight for the weather? I, I think it looks good. I think we're definitely going to get data. Uh, Their plan for the night is to confirm that five supernovae, previously identified through another telescope, are the type 1A supernovae they need for their research. The type 1A supernovae explode in a very similar way every time. And so they brighten like fireworks and then fade away, but they reach the same peak brightness. Their predictability makes these exploding stars what researchers call standard candles. Their initial brightness is constant and it grows fainter with distance. And since researchers know light always travels at 186,000 miles per second, they're able to calculate how long ago these supernovae exploded. When a supernova explodes, the light starts spreading out in all directions, uh, much like the, the uh, ripples on the water would spread out when you drop a pebble into the lake. Uh, the you know, range in which we were studying the supernova to see the acceleration uh, was so far away that the light was uh, coming towards us from a time where the clouds of gas were coalescing into what became our solar system. So as the light from the explosion was traveling towards our galaxy, our solar system had time to develop. Dinosaurs had a chance to come and go. And we humans made our grand entrance and had time to build our telescopes. As the star moves away from us, one other thing happens to its light. Because the universe is expanding, the light waves stretch. While the light is traveling to us through the universe, the universe is expanding. And everything in the universe that's not nailed down expands with the universe. And that includes the very wavelengths of the photons of light that are traveling to us from the supernova. If the object is moving away from the observer, it will appear red. In astronomy, this phenomenon is known as redshift. One way to visualize these stretching wavelengths is to look at how waves of sound, which are similar to waves of light, change. Can you hear how the pitch of the honk changed as the sound source moved away from you? This is because its wavelength is stretching. The same happens with supernovae's light. Now with these two ingredients, the brightness of the supernova and how much the light has been shifted towards the red in its appearance, you now can just read off the history of the expansion of the universe because the brightness tells you how far back in time any given supernova event occurred. The Redshift, as we call it, tells us how much the, super, the universe has expanded since that time. And now we just do this for 5, 10, 20, 40 supernova at different times back in history. And they, one after another, tell us for each time in history how much the universe has stretched since that time. I think I'll do the following. I think I'll start another exposure when this is complete and then look what it, see what it looks like and then I'll abort it if, if well, depending on what, what it looks like. Okay. But even though astronomers have become the historians of the universe, they can only speculate about what's causing this stretching. One, one example of a, of, of a slightly more exotic explanation could be that there's extra dimensions in the universe beyond the three dimensions that we're aware of of space and the one dimension of time. It's possible that there are other dimensions that we just don't usually experience. Perhaps in some way we're limited to the, the dimensions that we experience, um, but that other things, like perhaps gravity, could not be uh, limited, and maybe it can seep in to one of these extra dimensions. And that would make it look to us as if it was becoming diluted, that you're having less effective gravity, and perhaps um, that's one of the reasons the universe could be accelerating. Or the accelerated expansion could actually be caused by a new form of energy. This dark energy might be the missing force that sheds light on how gravity, the force that works on a large scale, fits in with the forces that bind atomic particles together. Could this undiscovered form of energy be the key to a unified theory of everything? You can try out you know, almost any crazy idea, and that doesn't mean that any crazy, crazy idea will be the right one, but it allows you to play a little bit. And then we're hoping that we'll get actual measurements that will pin down the theorists into some set of answers that could be possible. Researchers say that the only way to discard the inaccurate hypotheses is to come up with an ever more precise history. This will require observing more supernovae up closer. To do this, Perlmutter's team has designed a satellite that would carry a telescope more powerful than the Hubble into space. 
You can save you know, hundreds of times more sky at a time. And it's also designed for just the wavelength range, just the colors where we need to study the supernova and the other galaxies uh, in order to study dark energy. The Supernova Accelerator Probe, SNAP for short, is competing with two other projects for funds from NASA and the Department of Energy. If SNAP is chosen, the $1 billion probe would launch into space in 2014. So long as dark energy continues to be a mystery, it's unclear what the future of the universe might be. It could well be that in billions of years, the universe will stretch into nothingness, or the whole thing could reverse and contract into a big collapse. For now, Perlmutter is enjoying his privileged vantage point. In some sense, um, we may have found just the right spot to, to come to. So we are at just the right scale to be able to enjoy looking out at the infinite space above us and down into the microscopic world beneath us. And we're, I think, at just about the right time in history to be able to look back at the early, hot, fiery Big Bang period and project into the future of what we might get to see. In some sense, we're in a very cozy medium, and uh, I think it's a nice place to be. Keep Quest free. Discover more and donate at kqed.org slash quest.